Uh, yeah, I would love to, you know, something like that, or, you know, it, 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 as long as it gave me the kind of freedom that I had on this one. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, because uh, this one, you know, I know it's a Freddy book, but it was so original compared to the other ones. Mm. Um, but, but you know, it's not just uh, kissing butt or whatever, but yeah, you know, out of all the books, this one, I can still remember the details. Uh, you told such a good story with it, and uh, I'd love to see more. Uh, I'd love to see your take on Alien, for instance, like you said. Yeah. And now the the geek in me wants to read what you would have done with Jason X. You know? oh, absolutely, so. like Jason X is what got me into these horror novels. I didn't even, I didn't know any of these horror novels existed. Freddy, Final Destination, and then I looked up Jason X, and then I found your channel, and then that's how I started reading all these. So that's what started it all. So uh, Jeffrey Thomas, Jason X, that is definitely something I would yes. want to listen to. Especially <laughs> if they could have replaced his with the. Uh, took out Death Moon and put his in because uh, that one was uh, that would been much preferable. I, I, too, too bad that Black fl uh, Flame, you know, discontinued because, uh, yeah. you know, I, I I threw some other pitches at him too. One was a Friday the Thirteenth where Jason was going to be at a casino, and then I had because I just wanted to keep this going, and then and then yeah. I threw at them at, about uh, I think they were going to do some Blade novels too, so I I, I pitched them a, a Blade novel. And a final destination, uh, and but the the, the imprint di didn't continue, so they weren't able to. Uh, like I said, Jason X, if, if they'd had more time, if they'd been able to stay, keep this going, I think they would have ultimately done the Jason X once they caught up with the. Yeah, what they I've had. been loving the um, patron voice additions to Child's Play. That it's, it's made the book feel more um, well-rounded, like kind of like an audio drama uh, where they have like a cast. See, that's what I want to do one day. I want to do that. I want to take an old, like one of the old unused movie scripts and have all the patrons voice a character. That'd be cool. Yeah, like a table read thing, but like uh, put it out in uploads like like I do. Um, you know, but that would be good for an anniversary video. That would be a good one. Uh, yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to find the actual uh, Wes Craven script for uh, Dream, Dream Warriors. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, uh, Drew Porter is getting interesting right now. I mean, they made it's so different. It is so different. <laughs> that was so weird to see the marionette thing in the movie. Freddie just kind of dragged the dude down the hallway. And yeah, it's like, into the like road. it's like weekend at Bernie's. He was like weekend at. I should have said that at the <laughs> end because like, that's what it I reminded got... me of. Yeah, I, I can't get over Kincaid's bullet shaped head. I know. It's not a literal bullet, but all I can think of is those big bullets from, like, Super Mario that, like, fly across the screen. I keep thinking of King K with, like, a cartoon bullet head, like, hey, guys. <laughs> I know that's not Ooh, real. You might need some sleep, Sean. My head. What? <laughs> I said, you might need some sleep. <laughs> uh, I know Talking it. about bullet head people. You might have nightmares about bullet head people now. Yeah, oh, reminds me, reminds me of characters from like Little Lulu or something, you know, the old like black and white cartoons, like little bullets walking around with little arms. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. Oh God! Uh, at least Jennifer had a, a, a death resembling her death from the movie. Um, oh no! I tell you this right here and now, if that doctor doesn't die, I am writing a new ending <laughs> for this book. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, she's got. We I hope, get it in the movie. If we don't get it in this book, I will write her a very painful death. She's got Freddy's glove right now. I mean, shit. Uh, pull a Wes Craven's new nightmare, and just the glove psh, comes to life and kills her. And if that ends up happening, I did not know that yet. I have not read ahead. That is just that was just an idea. But yeah, uh, and man, Mrs. Kettlewell in Child's Play Two, the book. Wow. I she's nasty. At the end. It's not just the voice I'm doing for her. She's written nasty. You know? Like, way nastier than the movie. And then Joanne, the, the foster mom, is way sweeter in the book, you know, uh, than she was in the movie. And yeah. uh, I felt bad killing her tonight. With Shows tonight's face. Narration. They go right into a sewer and spend the rest of the movie in the sewer, so... It really, it wasn't Jason Goes to New York, it was Jason Goes on a Cruise with a brief stop in New York. There were some good kills on it. Uh, half the characters just die off screen, though, in the boats. Uh, it kind of reminded me of Friday the 13th Part 2. 
Yeah. Where some of the characters just go to that bar and you don't see them again. It's like, well, they're lucky. Um, you right. know, I have this. Part the eight, before, had a dude get his head punched off. Oh, I love it. <laughs> one of the best kills. That that's right up there with the uh, with the uh, cryogenic frozen head, Smash oh, yeah. and Jason X. Um, I have before we wrap up. I have this theory that ties six, seven, eight, and Jason goes to hell all together. And maybe it's just me trying too hard to defend the franchise. Okay, we know in part eight that uh, the main girl, she's had a fear of Jason since she was little. Um, she has, and she also hallucinates Jason as a child, and everything. Okay, I have hair in some scenes for some reason. Here, here's my theory on this because a lot of people like oh well jason turns into a kid at the end i'm like no he doesn't turn into kid she's been hallucinating the whole movie so here's my theory on it uh when her uncle took her um to learn how to swim and he threw out of the boat right yeah i like to think that that took place after part six shortly after and whenever she got thrown out into crystal lake and she started getting pulled down and she hallucinated little Jason down there, that it was actually big Jason who was chained down there, like, grabbing her, you know? Yeah. And that's why he didn't pull her all the way down. She's able to get free, but in her mind, she was picturing it being little Jason. And uh, then, you know, of course, he got free at some point, and then he got, at the end of Part 7, he got sent back down to the bottom of the lake, and that's how he got cut loose at the beginning of 8. Um, I think he drifted because he wasn't exactly chained into one spot. We never really no, saw part eight. He was tangled up in a bunch of like wires at the bottom of the lake. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Uh, yeah. Because at the end of seven, the her dad comes up and puts a chain oh, yeah. around his neck. But we never see what he does with Jason when he gets him under the water. So it could be anything. Um, and then at the end of, of part eight, here's here's what I'm talking about. My theory for part nine and the drastic difference in his appearance. Uh, we know that he got to New York, and we know that he would be able to get back, you know. Uh, and uh, so he gets the toxic sludge bath at the end of Part 8. We do know that Jason has regener- regenerative powers, you know, that's that's even touched upon in Jason X. Um, I believe that uh, he got washed away by the toxic sludge. Even his mask got melted some, if you remember and ripped off his face. I think he got washed away. She pictured him just as like a shivering little kid because she saw how scared he was whenever he got the sludge on his face. That was another hallucination. But he got he got washed away with that with that mask that was starting to melt. At some point he stuck the mask back on his face and uh, made his way back to Crystal Lake somehow, just like how he got to New York. And when Jason goes to hell starts, that's why his head's all fucked up looking and swollen and the mask is half melted. It's from that sludge bath. All that toxic sludge would have deformed his head even more. And that's why the mask is like melted to his face. Um, but, you know, he regenerates over time. And uh, a lot of people shit on part 10 with Jason X. They're like, oh, well, they didn't even try with Jason's makeup. He's got hair and stuff at the beginning. And it's like, yeah. He's been arrested and in custody for so long that he's been regenerating almost back to normal like he was before, like in part two and three. Hear me out, because all this time that he's been in custody, he hasn't been getting uh, toxic sludge baths or uh, getting beat up by a girl with telekinetic powers and, you know, getting shot and stabbed and hit with a motor and stuff. All those other movies, he was constantly getting fucked up, you know. And in Jason X, he's been in custody for years, so he's not taking all that damage that he would have been taking. So it makes sense that he's starting to have hair again, and he's you know he's regenerating almost to like how he was. That was my little theory on part six through ten. How his blood was still, you know, viscous. And, and, yeah, <laughs> what, uh, years later, uh, but so much of it dropped into that plastic, and that was enough plastic to make like a hundred dolls. You know, so why did only one of them get possessed? I always, I was always curious about that. Well, Maybe the novelization will answer it. I just don't understand why they took this blob of bloody, hairy tissue and they're like, "Oh yeah, just throw it in the pure plastic bag." They're like, "Why did they just?" Well, no, throw no, no. It they, they, they didn't put it in there. They just they picked it up to move it, and it went over top of the plastic bag. Oh, I thought they just 
threw it in. I'm like, that's not how that works. You can't just that's recycle what, that. That's, that's what I thought, too. And Like, when I rewatched Child's Play 3 the other day, I was like, is this the Mandela effect? I thought he dropped that hunk of plastic into the melted plastic. But all he does is it, it carries it over top of it, and the blood drips down into it. So, but yeah, I remembered it that way, too, that they dropped the whole chunk in there, but that's not how it played out. Um, but yeah, so why did they only possess one doll? Yeah, I, I don't know, but it, it kind of reminded me of, like, when they were, like, rebuilding Chucky in Child's Play 2, and I'm like, no one will know the difference! Yeah. Why are you taking, like, two days to... Scrape the, the scrape the teeth, get all the gunk off the teeth, and give them a new face. Just talk Just make a new doll and... and say, this was the doll, and we rebuilt it. You know, you didn't have to actually rebuild the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, who's going to know? First of all, it doesn't look like the pile of charred flesh that it was. And just, I don't know, that didn't really make a lot of sense. But it was cool. Well, you know, it was a really, it was Jason, really cool scene. Jason and Chucky getting brought back by electricity. You know, that's what brings them back. Um, but I will say the beginning of Child's Play 3, although I'll never understand why all that blood only made one Chucky doll come alive, I did like the whole reverse spring uh, thing they did, you know, where it's playing backwards when the doll, mm-hmm. like the, uh, and then it comes alive and screams. That was always a really cool intro. They actually did that for the uh, 2018 Halloween because in the original opening titles, it was a pumpkin and then they started zooming in on it. In Halloween 2018, it's like Michael's coming back. So the pumpkin is like, what's the opposite of rotting on rotting it's, it's like replenishing <laughs> itself and it's like becoming a healthy pumpkin but all they did was just like melt it and like reverse it but that's still really cool how it just like comes to like to life and the candle lights up and it's really really cool but they just reverse. that's how they filmed the uh the uh in in dream warriors the whole freddy penis snake thing that's eating her uh eating Kristen. I, was like, uh, I remember a snake. I don't remember a penis. <laughs> well, no. A re- no. Re- uh, look at the special features. Originally, it was a giant phallic Freddy. It looked like a giant. It was flesh colored, and oh. everything. And they had to paint it the purple and everything, the different color, because it because it, originally it got cut because it looked like a giant penis with Freddy's yeah. face. Oh, and, we're talking uh, about, while we're talking about that, penises, I can't get that Kane Hodder thing out of my head <laughs> earlier today, where he like. He put a strap on on as Jason and like opened the door and he just had this like thing sticking out. Oh my god! It's just like no, no. I was like, I'd be screaming no too if Jason was standing above me with yeah. the, with like a fifteen inch strap on. <laughs> but that shows you how freaking awesome Kane Hodder is pulling that shit. It was in a blooper reel. Y'all should check that out. Uh, just That's look dirty. up Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, Jason takes Manhattan bloopers. Uh, but yeah, the Freddy scene where she's they played that they they put her in it and they played it backwards to make it uh, to make it look like he was like eating her. It was actually uh, played backwards in that scene in Dream Warriors. So reverse frame uh, filming is is really awesome in horror movies. Um, if, if it's done right, I've seen it done bad. Like I think it was Batman and Robin with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where Robin comes out of the water and then a plant drags him down, but then the the water like defies gravity <laughs> at a certain point. It's like. You can't do that. Not that's, while he's in water. It looked, You could completely tell they just reversed. It didn't look real at all. I was too busy noticing that the whole movie was a pile of dung to notice that, I guess. My bad. Hey, uh, I grew up with that movie. It will always be gold to me. <laughs> what about... Well, you know, I have a, I have a good memory to that because that's the first, like, Batman movie in my uh, that my dad took me to see. So yeah. it was a good memory that we got to go see it, but... Um, I'll never forget, even as a kid, uh, while I was like preteen, uh, the scene in, in Batman and Robin with George Clooney where they're, uh, revealing the big telescope Yeah. and Bruce Wayne is like, as long as you don't, uh, point it towards my bedroom, it's like, what the hell are you doing in your bedroom, Bruce? <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> what's got, going got, on in there? Kind of glossing over as a kid. Now I'm just like, huh. It's like, holy KY jelly, Batman. Aww. <laughs> uh, theory on uh, Jason X, uh, not Uber Jason, but like Jason before he became Uber Jason, why he looked the way he looked. Hmm. William, okay. A lot of people bitch saying, oh, well, in Jason X, they didn't really try to even make him look like Jason. He had, he was sprouting hair and they didn't even give him a bald cap, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, if you pay attention, they talk about in the beginning of Jason X how the military wants to, uh, 
you know, tap into his rege regenerative powers, okay? They also talk about how they've had him in custody for a long time, and they've tried killing him, you know, executing him numbers of ways, and it didn't work. Okay. My theory why he looks so almost human is because he never had a chance to fully regenerate before because he was always killing people, being attacked by people, getting set on fire, getting hit with propellers. So he was constantly getting tore up. Now he's but, in jail getting three square meals a day. You know, if he's eating, I don't know. But he's been in custody for so long that he's been regenerating. He's not been getting attacked and tore up all the time. So he's, you know, regenerating back to where he would have hair again. And he would start looking more human. Human. He's just yeah. never had a chance to regenerate that far. Yeah, and that was, and that was my point, too, in, in uh, you know, book five, when I, when I threw in the scene from... Uh, the remake in in, in oh the, yeah we talked about I, that yeah go ahead go ahead how we talked about how that was uh, really a sequel right yeah that was really a sequel that's and how i see the movie notice if you notice josh and sean in jason goes to hell jason actually does have hair sprouting out of his head I don't know why I was thinking of uh, Friday the 13th is now a young adult novel, so they, they have to call it Jason Goes to Heck. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, goes, Jason Goes to the Bad Place, or Hades. Um, yeah. I'm no, but laughing. even back before I ever met William, ever even thought about this channel, the very first time I ever watched the remake of Friday the 13th, uh, which uh, I also like to imagine as Sam Winchester versus Jason Voorhees, uh, but... I digress. Um, the very first time I watched it, I was of the mind thinking, "Okay, I know this is a remake. That's what they're trying. That's what they're selling it as. But this could also just be a Friday the Thirteenth sequel." And uh, it's kind of like what I was talking about with Jason X. Uh, the way I saw it was like, if it was a sequel, the town has finally learned to keep people out of the camp, and they've stayed out of Jason's business, and he's been there for years. His mask is gone, so he's converted back to, you know, wrapping his head like he did in the early days with the sack. And he's been living out there for all these years, and he's regenerated because he's not, you know, killing people and getting attacked all the time by people in self-defense. So over the years, he's regenerated back to where, you know, he's like almost human. He's running again. He's thinking more. He's setting traps. And uh, that's why he acts more like the early movie Jason's. And the opening of the movie is just a recap of the early days with different actors. That's the way I look at it. That's I yeah. can enjoy I can enjoy the movie so much more when I picture it as a sequel, where the town has just left Jason alone for like a decade, and he's regenerated, and then people come back into the camp. Yeah, I yeah. dig it. And and on top of that, you know, for all those uh, campers that. That got killed, you know. They they had their pot bags, you know, bags of pot, and that's why that's why Camp Crystal Lake was covered in pot plants. They just sprouted over time. Yeah. Maybe Jason, yeah, because nobody's messing with either that or Jason got a hobby over time. Uh, <laughs> but but the super the supernatural fan in me also likes to envision that movie as Sam Winchester versus uh, versus Jason. Jared Padalecki was awesome in that movie. Think uh, about that. What's amusing is at the same time, uh, Jensen Ackles was in My Bloody, My Bloody Valentine. Valentine, which I mean, hey. hey. you hey. imagine if you went into the mine shaft and ran into Jared Padalecki with a pickaxe? Like, holy shit! I wish that I'm gonna not. count to three, and on three, we say it, okay? Guilty pleasure, not your favorite of all time, but like you're maybe like the cheat, like a cheesy slasher horror movie that you really enjoy your favorite of that you know so uh let me know when you have your answer okay. and i'll do the countdown all right you got your answer yep got William, you got it <clears throat> all right on on three one two three leprechaun ginger dead man. ginger dead man on sean and what was yours Original Halloween two, because no, there's like three Halloween twos now. Yeah, uh, the up. original Halloween two is my all time, maybe tied with Child's Play two as my favorite slasher sequel. Um, 
both of those are amazing sequels uh, that took what the original movie did and uh, did it even better. I still like Friday the 13th Part 2. That's really good. With the, the I have my problems there. with that one. There, there's too many holes, but go ahead. You're a hole. You're a hole. <laughs> um, uh, I think you mainly just don't like that the guy goes to a bar and doesn't get killed. Yes, that drives me nuts. Half the cast goes to the bar and it doesn't, they don't, you don't hear from him again. Or uh, actually, the other guy disappears at the end. Oh, yeah, that's true. That that bugs me a little bit, too, you know? I don't uh, know. Every, it for feels the like first, they couldn't finish filming. I don't know. For the first three Friday the 13th, you can't trust the endings. Because it's like, was it a dream? Did it happen with the boy coming out of the lake? And the second one, it was Jason coming through the window. And the third one, it was Jason's mom with a head coming out of the water to grab the girl. So you can't really take much stock in the endings of Friday the 13th. Okay, I think I have our new one, two, three, everybody says their favorite thing for this episode. Okay. Favorite part three of a horror franchise. I think most of us are going to, I think, I think we might all say the same thing. So I'm going to count to three. And hey, hey, I, hey, I got to I gotta think, I got to think about it real quick. Okay. Whenever I, whenever I say one, two, three, we all say our favorite part three uh, from a horror franchise, from any slasher horror franchise, whatever it is, uh, we throw out our favorite part three. So, think up your answer and let me know when I can count down. I, I think I'm ready. I'm ready, too. Definitely. Uh, mine's a cheesy answer, but I'm going to give it anyway. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Not Run Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors. I, I wanted to say that, but I, and this is probably going to drive you crazy. I'm going to say Halloween 3. Oh, I love Halloween 3. I know a yeah. lot of people, that it may, especially when it first came out, I think people feel more kindly toward it now. But when it first came out, people expected more Michael Myers. And, and you know, I could see that. But uh, I loved it from the beginning, and I, and I rewatched it not all that long ago, and I still love it. And it's just uh, so quirky and weird and eerie and unsettling. And I love it. So it was I, a great I said, horror movie. <laughs> it was. <laughs> they killed kids, man. That didn't happen in horror movies, you know? Dark. And it was dark, but it was so 80s and so good. And, I, okay, I have this way of looking, like a kind of a theory thing about certain movies. Like, if Halloween 3 had just been called Season of the Witch, yes, yeah, it would I be agree. looked at as a classic right now. You know, there actually is a Nicolas Cage movie he just came out with called Season of the Witch. It was like a couple years ago, yeah, yeah. not related to this movie at all. No, oh. Season of the Witch is, you know, there's the song and all that. Yeah. Um, but also, Godzilla 1998, if they had called that movie anything else besides Godzilla, mm -hmm. it would not get shit on. Because it was a great giant monster movie. It, it was really fun. was. It was, it a, was a fun. Okay. The sh and, and my last one, sorry, Sean, and I'll shut up, I promise. My <laughs> last one is the Child's Play remake. It gets a lot of shit. But if, oh. they had, if they had made the doll look any different, just look different, not called it Chucky, and not called it Child's Play... Mm -hmm. And just made an AI gone wrong movie with the, with the doll. It might have got compared to Child's Play, but I think it would be looked on more fondly uh, than it is being being a Child's Play remake and being so vastly different and everything. So, uh, Season of the Witch, Godzilla '98, and Child's Play. If mm -hmm. they called them, if they called them anything else, I think I really think the biggest things they have going against them is Season of the Witch being called Halloween Three. Yeah. Godzilla 98 being called Godzilla and Child's Play the remake being called Child's Play. I think it's most of their hate comes from the title. Yeah, uh, that's pretty true. I think they obviously they, they put the, the ta Halloween tag on Season of the Witch to draw it in because of the name, but it just that, that kind of blew up in their face. Of course, you're pulling people in with that name, so people are going to come in with certain expectations. And uh, it, definitely, if they just call it Season of the Witch, let it stand on its own. Um, People would, would uh, I think people would have better feelings toward it. But as I say, I think with the time, it's kind of become a cult classic. Yeah, it's gotten a lot more attention and a lot more love lately. Um, you know, they were going to make the Halloween series. Michael was dead after part two, and mm -hmm. it was going to be an anthology. Uh, yeah. part, part four was going to be a ghost story. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I it would... Like I would love to go to an alternate universe and see how, that, how the Halloween series would have turned out as an anthology series. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so Sorry, good. guys, but uh, if we're comparing Dream Warriors to Season of the Witch, only one of those movies got us a music video by Duncan. 
<laughs> and that is Freddy Krueger. That's a pretty yeah. good music video. I do yeah. enjoy Chariot of Pumpkins, though. That's an awesome score. You, what, uh, what about Three More Days to Halloween, Halloween, Halloween? But, you know, I in my... The I just I, the nose that made that jingle. I just <laughs> did... Well, all it is is London Bridge is falling down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So go punch I don't like that song either. Uh, I know, some of these old kids' songs are so dark, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, but I just did the audiobook of Halloween 3, the novelization, uh-huh. and I used the actual commercials from the movie and, and, and put them in there for those parts. Cool. Yeah, and at the end, uh, when it's all going down, I actually put the actual commercial itself on with the flashing pumpkin and everything. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with that, but uh, it, it got a lot of views. Like A lot of people were wanting to hear that one, so... I think you're right. It's it's become a cult classic. Yeah, yeah. It, it's actually my favorite Halloween movie. As weird as that might seem, it's it's just uh, so quirky. I think I would go two, one, three. Let's see here. I want to be careful here after that. So it'd go. I'd go part two first, then part one, then part three. Probably four, then H two O. Five, six, Resurrection. Uh, I made a mistake the other day. I watched Halloween 2018 with my wife, and she's like, this is pretty good. I want to see the original. So I showed the, the original. We were bored to tears. I was like, Michael, do something. He's just standing <laughs> in the bushes. He's standing by the school. He's standing in someone's yard. I'm like, do something. Kill somebody. That's because, oh and, that's because what we find scary and suspenseful yeah. Has been has been amped up so much since then yeah. because yeah. if if you if you critique that movie based on its time period and it being the first movie that was really a slasher flick like that, I know. it's it's an I amazing just, movie. But you're just right. Watched them back to back backwards like that. I mean, there's a scene in the 2018 one where he literally goes door by door killing people like he's yeah. making up for lost time, and you can't follow that up with the original. When that he kills that kid. Time. When he kills that kid in the 2018 one, yeah. they're like, holy shit, okay. All right. He killed the kid. <laughs> shit. Uh, it's like when I hear people say, uh, I see, sometimes I see people say, uh, they didn't find The Exorcist scary. And I'm like, what? But the, the people are so jaded because so much of what The Exorcist... They're desensitized. Yeah, they're desensitized. And they don't realize that so much of what they've seen and experienced uh, was innovated by The Exorcist. You that know? spider so walk of- is nightmare fuel to this day. Yeah, I still think it's the scariest film I ever saw. You know, I, I saw it when it first came out. You know, and and, and um, but the p- people who don't think it's scary, they're just jaded. They've 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 seen so many things that uh, stole from the Exorcist or built upon that the the uh, the, the effects and the and the uh, storytelling and the and the and the uh, subject matter and so forth. So they don't. They, you know, you really have to sometimes have a the perspective of the times in, in which it uh, first you know came out. Okay, the can anybody tell me what... Movie. Oh, go ahead. No, I'll just say the scariest part of The Exorcist to me was when he's like, get out of that little girl, and it jumps into the priest, and then he flies out the window. Like, when his eyes turn green, that scared yeah. the hell out and of then, me. And then part three tells you he didn't even die when he jumped out of the window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. That, now, that's a fantastic uh, episode three. Oh, I love part three of The Exorcist. Part two, yeah. eh. Part three, wow, great. It's and then like, they made they made two versions of part four. Yeah, it, very that interesting. Was, yeah, like uh, one of them, they're like, we don't want this to be part four. So they made another one, but then they released both of them on DVD. Yeah. And I, I rented both of them. And there are similarities, but man, they that was crazy that we got two part fours to Exorcist, but... Uh, it's so weird because you, you you know some of the same actors, some of the same scenes, uh, reshot. You know, yeah. But, uh, and, and to see the similar where they're similar and where they're different is it's really interesting and kind of like unprecedented. Yeah, that don't happen a lot. I mean, a lot of times similar movies come out like Armageddon and Deep Impact came out. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, you get a lot of that happening, but not the same movie. You know, yeah. and it's it's like a horror fan's dream. You know, like two different versions mm-hmm. of. The horror movie. But part like three was movie. amazing. Part three. Yeah, the book. The, there's two different versions of Friday the Thirteenth Three: The Novelization. One's oh. based on the early script. One's based on the final script. Oh, one wow. uh, has a racist Jason. Yeah, a racist Jason <laughs> that laughs, cackles, and wears a mask more like Michael Myers' mask than a hockey mask. 
Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it was, and gets he gets decapitated. Um, <laughs> quick trivia question, Exorcist. What did the demon that possessed her, the devil, whatever, call himself on the Ouija board? Go. Oh, Captain Howdy. You got it. God, that was quick. I thought you were going to ask if you, his name is, his name is, I, I think the, the demon you see in Iraq is uh, Pazuzu. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what they called him in the second one, the one that had James Earl Jones. I, li mm -hmm. I, yeah. I like her. I like the the second one, the Heretic or whatever. But part three just blew it out of the water. And oh, part yeah. three was like made for TV or something, wasn't it? And no. it's still okay. For some reason, I thought that one was like a made for TV sequel. No, but it, it I was love it. Actually, directed by the by the author though of The Exorcist, uh, William Peter Blatty, and I thought he did a, a fantastic job. Very unsettling. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's the thing about part one, it gets called boring by a lot of people, yeah. but it's kind of it's kind of like Dream Spawn. You you get invested in the characters that are being affected by this. Exactly. And, so that when things start going, getting weird, you know you feel the impact more. Exactly. Of of, of the supernatural, you know, uh, making itself known in our in our normal real world. You know, if it just started out with all the, 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 the bells and whistles, it just wouldn't have the same impact. I wish that The Exorcist, the original novel, was like uh, uh, out of print. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to read that one, but it's it's going to always be in print, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I love the movies, uh, definitely. Even, I think one of the part fours, if I remember right, I didn't care for it as much as the other one, but I can't say I hate any of the Exorcist movies. And the same goes for the Psycho movies. Um, surprisingly, even Psycho 4... Love that one. Yeah. Like favorites. Uh, it's like the backstory and stuff, you know? Maybe Part 3 was a little eh, but the Psycho movies are sh strong. And the Exorcist sequels are strong. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people haven't even seen uh, Exorcist 2 and 3 and 4 or Psycho 2 and 3 and 4. But uh, I think they have the strongest sequels out of most horror franchises. They don't they don't get weaker as they go, like a lot of them do, as right. far as uh, storytelling goes. Wow, the guys, <laughs> go ahead. No, I was just going to say, The Exorcist Three, uh, uh, just like uh, Halloween Three, with time, it's become a cult classic, and I think it's a lot more appreciated now than it was when it first premiered. Yeah, definitely.